hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DJ. Episode number 171, coming to you live from Zen Crypto HQ here at Tribeca Social. This is going to be a one-way episode, unfortunately, because I cannot hear people. Uh, Lissa, I see you in the crowd. want to say hello and shout out to you. Um, please help uh, spread this space if you can uh, as we talk with other Zen friends um, and what they're doing uh, with uh, what they're doing in Zen. And so as we get this ready, we're going to... So today, today, who do we have with us today? It's Corey the Investor here today at the Zen Meetup. <laughs> Corey the Investor. What do you do? Well, I do music for the uh, Hex community. Actually, a cryptocurrency community. I'll be making some songs with Zen uh, Hex on uh, IG, uh, SoundCloud. I got it on OpenSea, Hex can Music. So yeah, that's what I do, man. So if they're wanting to find you on SoundCloud, where do you, where do they find you? Find me on all the platforms, Corey A.N. Investor, on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and SoundCloud. Didn't you just launch your music as an NFT on OpenSea as well? Uh, that I did. I made. I have about three songs on uh, Hex Kid Music on OpenSea. I put them out maybe about three, four months ago with the, about Hex. And uh, yeah, man, it's all crypto music, basically. You're talking about people how to DCA and, and other trade secrets? Oh, man, and trade secrets, I'm trying to give people the basics just to get them into the space. So I let them know about delayed gratification, what a real crypto is. And I talk about, like I said, the health community and individuals within the space. Nice. And so what got you into Zen? Well, Zen, again, like I said, what real cryptocurrency is, it's uh, a crypto that is uh, immutable, uh, doesn't have a middleman. Uh, it's trustless and there is no head figure. So I believe Zen has those qualities. I think Jack Levin took it up from another few cryptocurrencies that are already available and just integrated into his own platform. And I think he's building a network that's going to be just as good as Hex or at Bitcoin. So there's a lot of seems to be not fighting, but bickering between Hex and Zen community right now. And, and I feel like there's enough for everyone. What, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that is that Hex it actually got me to where I am. I'm, I'm retired thanks to Hex to the cryptocurrency space. But like I told other people that crypt Hex is not going to be the begin all and end all. There are going to be other protocols that are going to come out that are going to supersede this. They're going to have other purpose purposes and use cases. And we're, this is not the end. We're just going to wait for them to come out. And we have to take risks with all assets. And I think that's what we're doing here. All right. And so, uh, what's one of the biggest things that you've gotten uh, going for you since since you started in crypto in Hex? What's one of the coolest things that you've gotten to do? Oh, the, the coolest thing I got to do is retire for my nine to five. <laughs> and outside of that, that, that's giving me the time to hang with family, help work on my health, and uh, understand, you know, hang with good people like you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. In the space, man, and that's what it's about—about about community building about sharing information and trying to lift everyone up and I'm, I'm able to do that now that I have the time. Nice. Uh, so you have a YouTube channel as well? Yeah. Okay. And so that's Corey with an E. Corey with an E, an investor. And um, so like, do you, you work to onboard people, teach people about what you've learned? Uh, well, on my channel, I talk about my journey. I've, I've been having the channel for over two years and I was talking about my journey about when I would leave my nine to five back then and what I was planning to do. And I'm, my name is Corey Investor. I invest not just in the assets, but invest in myself. And I talk about that on my channel. All right, nice. Take profit. Of course, of course. On DCA on the way up and DCA on the way in. Damn. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, as I you like to end every interview, and I, we're going to be talking to everyone here hopefully tonight. Um, one of the biggest things I always try to get, closing words, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Listen, take your time when you invest in crypto. Never go above and beyond what you can afford to lose. And uh, stick to things that are trustless and have no middleman. Like no FTX, no Celsius, no Terra <laughs> none of those things, okay? <laughs> I do feel that sex is, and uh, this is my opinion, I feel sex is provide a really good on-ramping solution for people getting new to crypto. Yeah. So I think that like as people learn, 
you you have to walk before you can run. And, and you know, obviously, not your keys, not your crypto. But I do feel that there is sometimes a, a little bit of safety in learning. Yes, there's always safety in learning. And again, we're all on a learning path right now. None of us knows what the end game is going to be for crypto. So I think we should all be animately invested within the space in order to see what's going to be coming up in the near future. All right. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Nice talk to you, man. Enjoy, enjoy the podcast. I'll be listening soon. Nice. All right. We're going to go find some other people to talk to real quick. Um, we're going to annoy Miss Claire and uh, Reality, and we're going to... Uh, Mr. Damien, uh, say hello. Hello, everyone. It's Prisma Phoenix here. <laughs> nice. And who are you? Mr. Damien. Mr. Damien. And Miss Rising Phoenix. I even love that name. I always say it wrong. I always say it wrong. Rising Phoenix. Rising Phoenix. Yes. I love it. All right. Uh, so you're here for Zen, right? Yeah, um, I facilitated the second ever Zen Crypto Meetup in person. Uh, the last, last one was two weeks ago, yeah. and we had four people, and uh, we've grown. I don't know how many people are here, but there's a lot more of us than last yeah, time. No. Nice. What, what got you into the Zen community? Uh, well, I have my friend E.T. to thank, or Zen Earth. Um, he's a good friend of mine for a couple of years, and uh, he just, you know, word of mouth, he told me about Zen said it's going to be big and i trusted his word <laughs> so nice. yeah yeah this is back in august so what's your favorite zen chain right now oh you know i'm i'm an ethereum mentor i'm i'm all about the ethereum not moonbeam i to be honest i haven't looked at i haven't looked at any other chain i know i know i i know for I those that aren't here i'm wearing a moonbeam shirt I'm I love the design and like I love the aesthetic of Moonbeam, so that's the one I would actually look into if I were and Avax. I would look into those two. Avax, Avax is a good one. So um, last minute, ten seconds, closing words. Um, just remember that you are powerful and that you are the master of your own being and you are in control of your thoughts. Do not give your energy away to people who misuse you. And just really use your discernment and, and welcome people who lift you up and, and make sure that the projects you're aligned with also do the same. Nice. And if someone wanted to find you online, where could they find you on Twitter? On Twitter, I'm at Zen Resonance, X-E-N Resonance. Nice. All right. And Mr. Damien, how are you, sir? Pretty good. And yourself? I'm doing really well. So I heard that this is your first Zen meetup, the first crypto nft blockchain meetup yep it is like typically you know like the past bear markets you know bull markets i would typically stay by myself and like investigate cryptos and just never come out but this time you know i think zen has something special here with this community so i figured i'll just give it a try and like yeah this meetup here that we have in new york it's all fucking standing awesome uh so what got you into zen how did you find it um, it was a, like a discussion between Richard Hart and Jack Levin, and they both had good talking points, but I really liked what Jack Levin was talking about. So I began to research about it, and I, you know, read about, like, the first principles and all that stuff, and then, like, the whole community. And I'm like, yeah, shit, you know, like, just go for it. Full send it. Nice. Uh, so what's your, are you minting on all the chains or just some of them? I mean, admittedly, I have a bag on BSC and Ethereum. But like my 99% of my holdings is on the Matic chain. Like I'm very, very supporting of Matic. Anything on Phantom or Moonbeam? Um, Phantom, no. After I'm done with my Matic bag, I'll be uh, getting my Moonbeam bag afterwards. Yes, another Moonbeam Ian. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things we call ourselves, uh, people are trying to pick up the word Zenians, but I don't know. I like Zen friends better. Yeah, it, to me, it sounds more friendly i guess you know like i mean yes yeah, the names the, the titles in the name but zenian seems more i don't know playful like cartoonish yeah but zen friends more like a social community thing i don't know it just sounds better it's i i literally made that up tonight oh shit yeah patent pendant yes patent pending made by player one taco dot e dot lens dot soul dot a few different near few other things yeah yeah so uh how long have you been in crypto for uh since 2017 2017 yep 
Okay. Uh, what was your first crypto? Um, Bitcoin, actually. That's a good coin. Yeah. I mean, it's like the foundation, you know. All right. So there's always a discussion between decentralized and centralized, sexes and dexes. Yep. What's your favorite sex? I mean, the one at home. That's the only sex I like. <laughs> the kids might be watching. Oh, oh well, uh, yeah, dex. I'm all about dexes. You know, to me, CEX is a, a means to an end, just on ramp, off ramp. But in my, if I had a choice, I would not be using any uh, CEXs. 100% dexes. Yeah. All right. So, what's your favorite right now? Um, I just use everything on Uniswap. Okay. Uniswap's a good one. All right. Nice. Uh, so, uh, closing statements. 10 seconds. Closing words. Just be kind to everyone. Look after your friends, your family. You know, life is short and just take care of each other. All right. And stay in school. And eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. Uh, are you on social media? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm jealous. I'm that one guy that's pulled up in his cave, not on social media because of work. Because they always look at what we do on social media. It's like, stay off a bit, but... Yeah, I'm not on social media. Smart man, I have 17 social media apps. I know, but hey, amazing. And it's great to meet you and we're, we'll talk more, but uh, yeah. Likewise. All right, we gotta go find the next person to talk to. Yeah. Let's see, does Crypto Little wanna be on the radio? Do you wanna be on the radio? On the radio. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? We're talking about Zen. Oh, I love Zen. Um, and we're talking, so I have created the new, our new name, I think. Not Zenians. Zen Friends. I like Zen Friends. Very, very cool, very cool. All right, so how long have you been in crypto for? Uh, probably about two years. Okay. And you, uh, I think uh, we'll be talking about this. What got you into crypto? Um... Um, I'm not quite sure. I just started watching documentaries on it, and it just pulled me in. All right. Uh, so, as I've been sort of asking, sexes versus dexes, what's your favorite dex? Oh, my favorite dex is Uniswap. Okay, Uniswap is a good one. What's your favorite sex? Coinbase is the only one I can use where I am. Oh, you live in New York. Yes, I do. All right, so... How do you get your, what have you, what do you do? You use your MetaMask? Uh, what else, do you use any other wallets? Uh, Ledger. Ledger, yes. All right, we have a smart lady with us tonight. Yes. Please remember, always keep your crypto safe. A hard wallet is not always a guarantee, but it is an extra step of security and a second set of signatures. And never give out your seed phrase. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, never give out your seed phrase. Yep, that's it. Uh, also known as your 12 words or your past recovery phrase. So, what's the one tip that you, what, what is your favorite Zen chain? Oh, Ethereum. Another ETH Maxi. All right. I am. <laughs> what other chains are you uh, minting Zen on? Oh, I don't want to say. <laughs> I, I think she doesn't, isn't minting it on Moonbeam yet. No, but I was just talking to someone here and thinking about trying that this this week. Yes. <laughs> if it, as a reminder, I'm wearing a large Moonbeam shirt and Moonbeam socks because I like Moonbeam and my Dex is on Moonbeam. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. But so uh, what is one of the things that, that really keep you keep you in crypto? What I'm sorry, what? What keeps you in crypto? Um what keeps me in crypto? There's just so much to learn. It's just a constant discovery. That and the communities. Um, so what are some of the things that you like to learn? Um, I love to learn everything about crypto. I love to learn about, I like to think about game theory. I love to learn about different chains. I love to, I, I would like to learn about liquidity and how these DEXs work. There's a lot. It's uh, do you so do you you, uh, you participate in like the telegram chats and stuff like that for Zen? Um, do you do you join the live chats a lot? And and what do you take out of those? There's so much information you can glean from listening to those chats and participating. There's amazing OGs in those chats. I, I will agree with you. Yeah, and if you listen to them, you can learn a tremendous amount. 
Um, so, all right. Uh, anything else you want to say? Um, I'm having a great time with all my Zen friends. Zen friends. Hashtag that. Uh, so, uh, as I end every conversation with everyone, 10 seconds, closing words. Mint Zen and make Zen friends. Make Zen friends and mint Zen. All right, cool. Hey, no. Uh, 10 seconds, 10 words. Yay. And if, uh, do you like, want, oh, you did great. You are amazing. So do you want, uh, do, you, do you, are you on social media? Do you want anyone to try to find you and listen to what, what share, see what you share? If you can find Crypto Little, I'm out there, but I'm an introvert, so I don't give out too much information. <laughs> crypto Little on Twitter. Look for her. She's an amazing person IRL. She's an amazing person online and great to have her as a Zen friend. All right, let's go see who we have next. We have this gentleman right here. What is your name? My name is Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? Great. I mean, I just found out five seconds ago you're doing a Twitter live stream, I believe, right? This is yep. Twitter? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, mono Beam? What? Mono Beam? That's you on Twitter? No, Moonbeam. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm Player One Taco. Okay. Also known as Taco. I'm definitely the biggest noob here. Found out about Zen three days ago, but I'm very interested. It's it's very exciting. It seems very curious, you know. From what I'm understanding, it's like the first sound system, the fairest kind of um, the fairest cryptography there is, right? Yeah. So. How long have you been in crypto for? Um, I bought into Ethereum um, the last day of 2020, right before the ball drop. And I've just been big on researching Ethereum since. But I want to expand. I want to break into the crypto space and um, kind of kind of just work, make that my full-time thing. I'm 21. The way I see it is that it's, it's less than a decade old. And being a new emerging industry... There's so many positions, so many routes you can take, and everything is really just kind of like not set in stone yet. So it seems like the perfect time for somebody young to just dive into something so new and emerging because of all the potential opportunity. I, I feel like I, I, at this point, want to make this like a full-time thing, break into that space in some some part. So if, mind, mind if we, what do you do in your normal day-to-day -to -day activities? So... 21 very young everything's been kind of changing recently high school finished in 2019 didn't really know what i want to do um i went to college for three semesters uh business and the semester went online i wasn't really doing that well and my father had a plumbing company i knew that that was a profitable route to take so i put a pause on that because it was online during covid plumbing school was actually offered in person so i knew that in order to take over the business i gotta get x amount of paperwork done so might as well do the nine month program now i've been working with him full time for about a year now i finished that program and uh it, i've had a lot of free time and in my free time i've just been exploring different routes different kind of opportunities where to acquire wealth what different asset routes and i realized over the course of a year that in my free time, I'm most drawn to crypto. I'm most interested in crypto. And um, yeah, I, I feel like recently it's, I've, I've taken everything into consideration. I feel like I want to break into that space and work and it, gain more experience and knowledge in that space, really kind of making my life work. So do you buy a bunch of different cryptos or do you just buy ETH? What do you do? Right now, I'm strictly in ETH. But I am looking into minting, minting uh, Zen because of this. Nice. Uh, and so do you buy other tokens at all or NFTs? I have nothing right now besides an ENS. And nice. what's your ENS? Key6.e. Nice. All right. And that's a nice one. So what else do you, what else, uh, do you like in, in crypto? Uh, anything else that's going on that that's interests you or piques your interest? Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I really like how, you know, let me figure out, like, give me one second. Let me figure out how to word this. Um, you know, 
um, the decentralized finance sector takes up 0.2% of the financial market share. Banks offer you 0.025% yield on your deposits. Meanwhile, they legally front run your money. This industry has such little market share, yet they're offering so much more APY, you know? It seems like it seems like it's taking the greed away from the people, this industry, and it's really trying to revolutionize something a lot bigger than just making a quick buck here and there. Nice. All right. So as we end every interview, and one, it's awesome meeting you. I can't wait to talk with you more. Uh, Ten seconds. Final thoughts. Zen is very interesting, and I think now is the right time to do it. There's no reason to wait. Simple enough. Nice. All right. We will see you on the Zen friend side. So one of the things that I've been doing, everyone's been calling Zenians. I, I'm, I'm done with Zenians. Zen friends. What do you think? Zen friends. What do you think? I like that. I like that. I like that. All right. We got another Zen friend. All right, Mike. If be, are you on social media? Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Where, where can find someone find you on Twitter? Twitter is going to be Mike. S E K I E W I C Z. All right. And uh, we will see you on the flip side, Mike. It is it is great to meet you and we'll talk to you more later. So we have a, a great person here right now. We have oh, as he wipes his shoulders, he is. We have Bitcoin. 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 Benito. Yes. We have a great YouTuber here. He does a lot of crypto pieces, so great education on YouTube. Where can they find you on YouTube? They can find me on Bitcoin Benito on YouTube. Just type that in. You'll see my videos. I'm the guy with the blue logo, and you should be able to recognize me. All right. Like my videos. Tell your friends to follow me. And uh, yeah. Are you on Twitter, too? I'm on Twitter. Same thing. Bitcoin Benito on Twitter. Bitcoin Benito on Instagram. I don't really use Instagram like that. But follow my Instagram also if you want to. But Twitter and YouTube is where you need to follow me the most. All right. And so, uh, how long have you been in crypto for? So, I've been in crypto since about 2017. I lost a shit ton of money in 2018. I hated crypto. And then in 2020, I was like, okay, maybe I should stop hating crypto because the fundamentals are actually amazing. I study crypto for like 12 hours a day, every single day. Um, after I realized the power of it, and I've been a fanatic with crypto ever since. So now I'm over here in the Zen community uh, meetup, and I feel like Zen is one of the many coins that's going to blow up. So we'll see what happens. All right. So what's your? So how many chains are you minting Zen on? So right now I'm only minting on Ethereum because Ethereum is the OG coin. Is it Ethereum is the OG token? That's where most of the funds are. So. If I see other chains like maybe Matic, maybe Matic, I'm dabbling my foot into it. If Matic does something, then maybe I'll buy a couple coins in Matic. But for right now, it's just Ethereum. All right. So uh, what's some of the biggest things that, you can, that you've learned over the last couple of years? Um, <laughs> do not keep your coins on the exchanges. I had a lot of coins on FTX, but luckily I pulled it out before... Sam Bankman Freed and his sex cult in the Bahamas was fucking our money away, literally fucking our money away. So I pulled my money out, hopefully, uh, uh, thankfully, earlier before that happened. Also, you need to know that Bitcoin and crypto in general goes through four year cycles. So be because because crypto goes through four year cycles, you need to pull your money out when you make a profit. If you make a profit and you are in the fourth year, pull your money out. Don't be greedy. If you're greedy, you're going to lose all your money. I was greedy and I lost all the gains that I made. I made a 5x gain and I lost all the 5x. So I learned my lesson from 2017, 2020 or whatever. I made a little bit of profit in 2021, right? So thankfully I made a little bit. But I didn't make as much as I should have. So where do you think we are in that four-year cycle right now? So right now, we are at the... We are coming outside of the bottom of the bear market. So Bitcoin is never going to go to $15,000 ever again, ever. We've already hit the bottom. 
maybe it could go down. It could go back down to fifteen thousand, but it's never going to go below fifteen thousand ever again. Um, and we're going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. All the altcoins, sure, altcoins can fall again, but they're just going to fall to where they were in like two thousand twenty-one. They're not going to crash dramatically. So what I would say is that you need to invest into high quality, low cap cryptos. Invest into high quality, low cap cryptocurrencies such as Engine, such as Zen, such as uh, Post Chain, whatever Post Chain comes out. What do you think of Render? Huh? Render. Have you heard of Render? No, I've never heard of Render. What's okay, we'll talk about Render later. Okay. Yeah, so just invest in low cap, high quality uh tokens and you'll be fine what do you what do you think about iso tokens like a uh, hedera uh iota internet um internet money um you know xrp they're cool but you should invest in tokens like i already said those other tokens sure they could blow up but i would say that you need to crawl before you can walk so invest into invest into polka dot Invest into engine. Invest into these cryptos and tokens that have already been proven themselves. Invest into Matic. Matic is also a good one. Matic slash Polygon, same name. Yeah. Invest into those tokens. Because I've already been burned for the past five years, so I'm telling you to invest. And by the way, every single coin that I just mentioned is probably going to do a, a 20x or 30x in the next two, three years. So if you put $1,000 in, you're going to have 30000 If you put $10,000 in, you're going to have $300,000. So um, who cares? If the fact that you put $10,000 in and you get out $300,000 out in a, in a year or two is a win. It's a guaranteed win. Your children will be happy. Your spouse will be happy. Just do what you have to do. So one of the things, uh, so do you have any, are, are you, what's your favorite chain right now that you like to do stuff on? Uh, Ethereum. All right. Are there any ERC20 tokens that you really like? Uh, Zen, of course. Um, Engine is another good one. Hex is a really good um, ERC20 token and a whole post chain system. What about Icosa or Hedron? I'm not really into them yet because they haven't proven themselves yet. Okay. So when they prove themselves long term, yeah, there's, there's been people that made like 10x off of Hedron. Sure, that's awesome. But are they going to make another 10x from now? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, what about any NFTs? So NFTs, I'm to ZenFTs. I'm into, um, there's an NFT that I'm actually into. Let me find it, hold on. We're having fun, we're, we're, we're wallet hunting right now for, for NFTs. So the NFTs that I'm into, I'm actually into the NFTs just because I like the way they look. So uh, I'm into killers, native killers and regular killers. Yeah, killers. So I'm to the killers. Killers with a Z at the end. Okay. So the only reason I'm into them is because they're gonna make a, they're gonna make a video game, and I just like the way they look. I like the, I just like the way they look. You it's should. A, it's just more from an artistic standpoint. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one of the NFTs you got, you got your Zen NFTs going. And one force too. One force. Okay, one force. Okay, so out of out of your um, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Out of your Zen NFTs, which ones did did you have the most fun minting? Did you do a limited collector, or did you go for a? I did a limited, okay. and I had to burn two hundred and fifty thousand. It's two hundred and fifty million Zen to get that right. limited, and I could have sold that two hundred and fifty million for like seven hundred dollars or something like that. But I decided to invest into the Zen ecosystem, so I better get my money back. All right. Jack, if you're listening to this, give me my money back because I gave you $700 I free dollars. I want to multiple on that. I will. So one of the cool things about Zen is it wasn't Jack. It's all gas fees. It's Jack that did it. Jack, Jack is a very convincing person, but it, actually for me it was the white paper. Okay, so Jack was able to create a white paper. And he was able to find really good developers that were very smart. These developers are actually very, very fast. I'm stunned at their ability to create such amazing protocols, amazing systems so quickly because software development is very difficult. I'm a software developer, so it's fucking 
software development is a pain in the ass. So the fact that they're able to do it so fast is wild. They're all, they're very smart. Let me just put it like that. They're very smart people. So there's been some, there's been some um, ruffled feathers ever since Jack talked about, you know, going to Silicon Valley for funding to produce X1 and move up that chain. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that if you're going to make a layer one, layer ones are very, very hard. Crypto in general is hard by itself, but making a layer one is another layer, no pun intended, on top of the difficulty of making a crypto chain. So layer, layer ones is probably the hardest thing that you can do right now in the software development aspect. Besides making very high level AI, layer ones in crypto is probably number two of the most difficult things that you can ever do in software development right now. So because of that, you need you need millions of dollars of investment to hire the most intelligent software developers to create your layer one. Not only that, but pro provide stability for the network. Provide stability, you need investors also to put money into your layer one to make sure that your layer one stays at a stable price. Because you don't want to just make a layer one and then it just goes up and down constantly. So, so one of the things that, that um, I, I'm, I'm petitioning Jack about is distributed nodes and validators. Uh, for a network rather than, you know, yes, AWS, we all run our decentralized networks on AWS, um, but, you know, decentralized nodes in the fact and validators in people's homes. Uh, what do you think of something like that? Would you pay, buy something? Uh, would you, if you only had to connect it to your Wi Fi or connect it to your internet and plug it into power, would you do that? So I agree, he does have to de decentralize his uh, nodes so he can put it on AWS, but he can also put it on Azure. He could also put it on Helium. I don't know if you heard about Helium, but Helium allows you to have decentralized Internet of Things, right? But the power of Helium is not that powerful. A lot Helium moved to Solana. So he could do it on Solana too. Helium, a lot of people that are on Helium, they just have their regular laptop that costs $500. So the power of Helium is not that powerful, but the power of Helium is that it's decentralized. So if, um, if Jeff Bezos is like, fuck Zen, I hate Zen, Jack is the worst person of all time. He could cancel Zen immediately if he wanted to. So therefore, you have to decentralize. That's the whole point of crypto, right? To be decentralized. Decentralize your power of the X1 network. Decentralize the power of the Zen network, Zen ecosystem, so that you're not just related to one uh, company. Awesome. And so once again, if people want to find you online, where do they find you? Bitcoin Benito. Go YouTube. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter. I already said that, right? You yeah. probably have YouTube and Twitter. And, and so as I ask everyone and as I end every interview, 10 seconds, words of wisdom, closing words. Um, research before you buy and pull your money out of crypto every four years. Or take profits before then? Yes. yes. Take, take profits. profits every four years. Don't be greedy. Take your profits out every four years. You, before four years or when they got profits? Before four years. You know, what the, at the top, when other people are greedy, you need to be fearful. And that's when you need to pull your money out. But when other people are fearful, sorry, when other people are fearful, you need to be greedy. When people are greedy, you need to be fearful. Do the opposite of what the general uh, wider market does. Awesome. Hey, I want to thank you. And we got so much more to talk about, man. Uh, Great having you on Taco Bites and uh, uh, just another bite of DGen. Let's see. Uh, it's on uh, tele It's on Twitter right now. And then I'll be on YouTube later. All right. So we had someone come and touch us and wanted to say hi to us. And I didn't mean to interrupt the conversation. What is your name? Uh, Joseph. Joseph. Hey, how are you? Are you in, are you in blockchain, I take it? I am blockchains and definitely some of the chains as well. But yeah, definitely them. Nice. Uh, what have you been doing on Zen? Uh, minting a bit. So I have uh, about 17 wallets right now, but uh, I'm also buying. I see it as a big part of the future right now, especially with regards to NFTs. So now they're calling them Zen NFTs, but regardless of the names and also the different coins uh, on the Zen network, I definitely believe there's a huge future. There's a future within NFTs on Zen. Nice. I'm going to interrupt our conversation for one second because I forgot one question, but I will be right back in a millisecond. Benito, I have a question for you. Right now they're calling us all Zenians, but I have a new word I think we should hashtag out. Tell me what you think. Zen friends. 
I think Zenny Ames is better. Ah, uh, that's another win for Zen, friends. <laughs> All right, so we just had to ask our question over there that we got to ask you. Uh, everyone sort of with the Zen community has been calling everyone Zenians. What do you think, Zenians or Zen friends? I think Zenians is good. I mean, Zenians can turn into anything. Right now, is we're at Zen YC right now. Uh, Tribeca Social, but it could be really anywhere. Fact of the matter is, uh, everyone here is basically smarter than I even imagined, and really is a great group, honestly. So uh, I'm really bad at hearing. So I heard you say you really like Zen friends. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Yes, another win for Zen friends. How long have you been in blockchain for? Uh, about eight years. Okay, a year or eight, eight years? Eight years. Okay, nice. What got you into Bitcoin or got you into blockchain? Uh, so basically I found out about it years ago when uh, someone was mining it and he thought like, hey, there might be a possibility here that it could actually be worth something and it's so cheap right now. Uh, and he was just playing around with it. Um, I was just actually mentioning this to someone. So yeah, and basically... Years later, when I brought it up, I said, wow, you're a genius. You're, a genius. you're unbelievable that you kind of predicted that when people that hadn't even heard of Bitcoin, definitely not blockchain. And he said, well, hey, I didn't know. So at that point, it was just a possibility. Um, but after that, definitely heard about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and it just kind of took off from there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, but it was really literally, literally in someone's basement. He's got a basement apartment, and he was mining Bitcoin for the fun of it because he enjoyed it. Not because he thought it was going to be wealthy, but he thought there might be a possibility here. All right. So what, what are your favorite chains right now for Zen? Right now, so I basically, uh, I'm just sticking with the ETH chain and BSC for minting, but mostly, I, I'm saying, yeah, right now, I'm just giving you a very simple and seeing what happens. And every week or so, um, I'm seeing new developments. So it's good to see, you know, but what do we, what do we got to do to get you on Moonbeam? Oh yeah, no, I like I was actually just speaking to someone about it right here. Uh, not much right now. All right, midnight. Not not much. We we got to get you on moonbeams then. All right, because right. right, we're going to the moon. All right, hey. So, I, man, it has been an honor meeting you. I want to. If people are looking for you online, where can they find you? Uh, Telegram. All right. Yeah. And so then, as we've asked everyone, ten seconds, closing words. Uh, I just love this group. Love the people. Uh, it's definitely as good or better than I imagined. So it's got to keep going with it, rolling with the punches. Let's go. All right. Hey, thank you so much. And we're going to talk later. All right. All right. Let's see here. We have our last person to talk to two people. We have, are we interrupting a very important conversation? Um, the potential of Zen getting on other chains besides the ones it's already on. And I brought up that Solana has a huge NFT community. And we were just starting to discuss what it would look like for Zen to be on Solana. Okay. So then how many chains is Zen on right now? 10 chains, sir. Do you know those chains off the top of your head? I can start. Let's Ethereum, do it. Ethereum, Binance. Uh, Moonbeam, AVAX, Evmos, I already said AVAX, uh, Polygon, of course, um, Dogechain, OKC, Phantom, what did I forget? Oh, eat proof of work. Nice. 10 for 10. And who are you? Eskimo. 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 So, what? what is... I'm wearing a Moonbeam t-shirt tonight. Taco? Why am I wearing a Moonbeam t-shirt? Tell me why. Because I'm wearing a Moonbeam t-shirt. <laughs> okay, so, now, who else are we here with tonight? Yakov. And uh, Yakov, what's your favorite chain that Zen is on? Um, currently, my favorite... Well, I don't have a favorite because I fucking love all of crypto. I like you. <laughs> okay. So what where where's where where are you doing the most mints on right now? I would probably say the most mints I have going on Ethereum. Actually <laughs> No, the most valuable mints are going on Ethereum. I probably have the most mints on Matic or Phantom. 
Uh, what do you think about OKC's little d dirty move where they, they minted a trillion tokens and then they changed their gas fee structure? It's dirty and it's going to cost them X1. Yeah. So, th 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 this is... We will talk more about that, but this is a this is a thing that I want to say about this. One of the things that they that they hadn't prepared for was dynamic gas fee structure. So by not being able to have a fluctuating gas fee, they weren't able to support the network. The big benefit of Zen is it's a free token. All it does is burn gas. We are stress testing each and every network that Zen is on, and by stress testing uh, networks, we're also finding how this new landscape of interoperability can work. And if we're going to put DeFi games on one chain and we're going to put NFTs on another chain and, you know, whatever projects on other chains, we need to know this information of how much we can stress test a network, how much are their gas is going to go up on each network. Zen is figuring that out. You're welcome. So how much, uh, I, so I heard from you that Moonbeam is your favorite Zen chain. <laughs> oh taco <laughs> oh taco <laughs> but i do have moonbeam socks on does that sway you oh that sways me very much i need myself a pair of moonbeam socks shoulder to toe i am moonbeam shoulder to toe yeah. so uh what is one of the biggest things that you've liked about zen so far the biggest thing that i like is it evokes the first principles and Unlike mostly any other crypto project ever, there is a um, no founder allocation. There's no token allocation before the contract is live. That's fucking amazing. Can I swear on here? <laughs> I think you already did. We're stress testing other networks, like, like pushing it and seeing how it can handle that load. And I think that was a really good point. Sorry, there's also no uh, VCs. There's no uh, miners or dev team that you have to pay back after the fact. It's uh, a very simple contract, 400 lines of code. And what that allows you to do is you, it's a Lego block that now you can build on top of that. And you can start building more and more dApps and decentralized uh, protocols on top of this product. It's amazing. So, okay, so you touched on two things that I want to touch on, um, but one, number one, VCs, all right? So there's been some controversy with Jack now moving on to X1 and creating a new, a layer one and saying, hey, I'm going for VCs now in Silicon Valley because of my history and my pedigree. For those that don't know about Jack Levin, he was em Google employee number 19, I think. 21. 21. Oh, Black I have Jack. Blackjack. So, um... And Google employee number 21 um, and really helped with the Google infrastructure. So he has been around for a minute and has a large connection base. Um, but people are sort of in a in a little bit of a tizzy about that. But they don't really maybe understand that what goes behind building a layer one. What do you think on that? Uh, personally, so uh, I understand why people got in a tizzy about it. Um, and in fact, I would probably be in that camp as well. But um uh zen is not x1 it, it can't be compared to x1 in the same way he's doing a, a completely different objective um and if you want uh some way to promote zen on all the chains that zen is on what better way to connect like a hub all these chains that uh, you know have been neglected for so long and so the fact that he's uh incorporating vc's capital he's also um in this this silicon uh valley model is not really a problem because he's gonna have these uh vc's lock up uh you know their investment for some odd years before uh they can even you know reap the rewards of their you know reap their profits that means the zenians now have the first mover advantage. It's up to us what this chain's gonna be. So um, I wanna go to uh, Eskimo for the same question, but you said a word that I'm trying to change. You said Zenians. I don't know why it, all of a sudden I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like it, but I feel we can do better. What do you think of Zen friends? 
Uh, Zen Friends is cool. I, I also want to throw in the, uh, just like, uh, uh, we have Zenny, like Israeli. We have uh, uh, Zenikins. We have uh, uh, Zenites. You know, it, it, Zen Friends is cool, though. I feel that Zen Friends is more encompassing and more accepting. Yeah, maybe Zen, Zen Migos? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Eskimo, what, what is your thought on Jack going with BC funding for X1? I, I was, we were actually just talking about this. Uh, we were talking about, I was saying, I didn't know what to think about it, but what helped was the other day when we were at the Blue Dow, com, uh, not conference, but the event that we went to, I really liked listening to the way that they described the relationship between founders and VCs or angel investors. And that there's this idea, I think, when you're an early founder or a new founder, that you, you're, they're doing you a favor, that those VCs or those people in the room, they're doing you a favor. But really, what the way they were describing it is you have the right to go research them as much. This is for smaller uh, founders, usually. But it's a way to reorient myself in the way I'm looking at Jack. Jack is very well versed in this world. And he knows that there's lots of money, inv investable money in search of good founders that can actually launch a project and bring things home and bring it to fruition. And so I think that he sees this as an opportunity to get the investment that is needed to be able to create the kind of treasury that is needed to be, that is to be able to launch and maintain update and maintain a, a viable chain that is actually going to be interoperable with 10 plus networks and have that imp and have the financing for that infrastructure but also that he's created zen which really gets out to the masses so look i don't mean to say that i have rose colored glasses on about it but i, I see it differently or i'm starting to see it differently all right, awesome. I, great opinions. I love them. So, as we close out this episode, what we've been doing with everyone, 10 seconds, closing words. Oh, my God. I can't think of anything in 10 seconds. I love crypto. I love this uh, space. I love my new Zen Migos. What is a Zen Friends? Zen Friends. All right, 10 seconds, closing words. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, I got knock knock there. So you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the night. So as we do this, we will close with our favorite words and our one. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. But closed mouth cannot be fed, and you cannot feed a closed mouth. So once again, knock knock. Be like a baby bird.